In this video we're going to talk a little bit about specific heat capacity and latent heat, which control how much energy you need to heat something up or cool it down by a certain amount. Now in this course we're assuming you are familiar with these concepts from school. If you are not, you should click on the link below this video and go and revise it in the textbook. We will not cover this in full detail, this is just a quick reminder of the key facts. If you have an object and you want to increase its temperature, you have to add heat. Say, put a fire underneath it. That will add a certain amount of heat energy, amount of heat energy dq, and that will give you a temperature change given by the equation. You could change, change in temperature dt, which is the mass times the specific heat capacity times a change in temperature. Likewise, if you want to cool something down by a certain change in temperature dt, you will need to take away this much heat. The one tricky thing about this is people often assume that whenever you add heat to something, the temperature must always increase. Whenever you take heat away, the temperature must always decrease. But that's not quite true. It's true if something remains in the same state of matter, like a solid or a liquid or a gas, but if something changes from liquid to gas or solid to liquid or something like that, changes phase, then you need to factor in the latent heat as well. For example, let's imagine you have a block of ice or anything solid. We'll plot its temperature as we add heat. So let's imagine it's, I don't know, a cup full of ice and we've put a fire underneath it. So we're steadily adding heat at some particular rate of joules per second, of watts. Now to begin with, it will get hotter. Let's say it starts as ice at minus 10 degrees or something like that. So to begin with, the temperature will increase as you add energy until it hits zero Celsius. At that point, it will start melting. And the temperature will remain constant as you put more heat in. What will happen is it'll go from being 100% ice, 0% water, to I don't know, maybe 50% ice, 50% water, until eventually everything's melted and it's 100% water. So while that's happening, the temperature remains the same even though you're putting heat in. The heat is going not into making the ice molecules vibrate more, but into breaking the bonds to turn them into water molecules. And the energy needed to turn a lump of ice into a lump of water is pretty enormous. Um, to heat up ice, it takes about 2,000 joules per kilogram per Kelvin. But the latent heat, this is called the latent heat, the amount needed to turn one kilogram of ice into one kilogram of water, is a whopping 334,000 joules. But eventually you've put enough heat in and it's all melted, then the temperature starts rising again. But now it rises slower, because the liquid water has a very high specific heat capacity. It's about the highest specific capacity of anything, it's 4,200 joules per Kelvin per kilogram. Note that while temperature in Kelvin and temperatures in centigrade are different scales, it doesn't matter which you use for heat capacity because you're only talking about the change in the temperature, and a change of one centigrade is the same as a change of one Kelvin. Anyway, your temperature will then rise as you start off with cold water and it gets hotter and hotter and hotter until eventually you reach 100 degrees centigrade. And then, once again, the temperature will plateau as you put heat in. Okay, now it's a lot. This is now the latent heat of vaporization, turning liquid water into steam. So you start off with 100% water and it'll steadily boil off as more and more steam acquires. This is an enormous amount. It's 2,260, oh, 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 so 2,260,000 joules per kilogram. This should be per kilogram as well. To turn 
water into steam. That has enormous implications for climate, as we see. And then eventually all you've got left with is steam, and if the steam is still in your container, you can raise the temperature of that and make the steam hotter and hotter. So that's how it always works. If something's undergoing a phase change, you use the latent heat to work out how much energy is needed to convert it from liquid to solid, solid to gas, whatever it might be. If it's in between phase changes, then you use a specific heat capacity to work out how much energy is needed for a given change in temperature.